Field. The summer transfer window has slammed shut, as Sky Sports would say, which means it's time for your favourite part of the season. You love this bit, don't you? Your, love, your window review. I love staying as late as possible <laughs> on, on their normally 31st. They extended it 24 hours just to annoy people like me. <laughs> 24 well, hours to get off later on holiday. Well, look, we, we sit here with our yeah. new signings and Mozanka returning. Um, but starting at the beginning of the whole window and, well, probably a bit further forward, what was the strategy going into the window this year? Same as always, really. I think um, some of the signings that we made were, you know, with Hickey, Kimmons, Potter, and Dan's got in particular younger players. We always want to do that, you know, we always want to add potential and in time and place we can develop a bit further. Partly because obviously it's, it's a good thing to do, partly because buying the finished article is more expensive, so that's always the aim. Um, so when we start off, we, we always want to try and do that. And obviously we added some more teams in there as well with obviously Zanga Ben Mee, uh, Thomas Strakosha, so I think it was a good balance overall that we got uh, to the window. For fans who might not know, how, how does the strategy come about? Who's involved? When does it start? Because everyone in their own business will probably have to create strategies and I imagine it's very different, surely. Yeah, so I mean obviously over a long period the, the target of buying young players and developing them has been set in store for a long time, but going into a window, um, you know, we've been planning this since the end of last summer, someone like Kimo's Spot, for example, was a target one year ago and we didn't get him and obviously it's about you know, keeping watching and monitoring all the rest of it. Uh, so more or less after last summer we'll sit down and go what do, what do we think we need over the next sort of two or three windows, uh, identify not just positional um, targets, I think obviously the right back situation with one where Sergio and Maldor has done because actually did fantastic build last year. Um, for example, but obviously we'd, we'd always identify that as some area probably to, to strengthen not just positioning, but also in terms of the, the squad, in terms of pace and athleticism, robustness to, to, to play in Premier League, set piece threat, you know, all the different elements you want to look at. So we planned that ages ago, and then uh, and then those targets, the best the best ones were the ones that have been lined up for a long time, you know. Yeah, and do, does those targets, how much do they change as the window goes on? Do, do things affect things? Do you go, actually, we now we need this from maybe injuries or. I guess the obvious one would be with, with Christian Eriksen the situation this summer. Did you go have to wait to see what happens there before you moved on with certain targets? Uh, not, not so much. I mean, not, not with him particularly, because I think we always were realistic about you know our chance of getting him. And as it goes on, and you haven't really heard anything, you, you, you sort of think in your head anyway. Yeah. Um, but you, you can do, for example, um, you know, obviously we had some injuries at centre back, which which you needed to take into account. And um, Zagreb was training with us always with a view towards right. um, towards potentially you could stay on, although we were very open with each other, they're saying, look, stay here, train, rehab, you're gonna need to do that anyway, to get yourself back. We're very open minded to keep you, but we know that there's a there's a door there. If you want to walk out as you go to another club, we can't stop that. Equally if we want to bring another player, we you know we can do that. But obviously we've got to get a good solution at the end. So so you try not to change too many plans through the window in terms of what you need. Obviously, some players you target and you miss out on. Um, some some positional requirements come along occasionally, but you want to try and minimise the kind of last minute reaction to certain events in the in the summer, really. And yourself, Lee, and the team sitting here now as it as it closes, how are you feeling? Are you you happy with it? Because as Brentford fans, there's a lot of Brentford fans out there who are absolutely over the moon with this window. Yeah, well, I'm sitting here now, Lee, and the team are down there. Down the pub having a drink, I think. I think, I think, I think, Lee's, short I think, I think Lee's out with Thomas right now while I'm doing this. Look, they, they've done a fantastic job. First, to say that Lee and the team have done a fantastic job. Obviously, Lee's from technical director now to slightly more responsibilities, um, but still with the main focus on getting this right. And I think we've done a good job uh, overall. Yeah, pretty pleased with pretty pleased with it. Um, to the players we've had, I think, have already started to show the good players, which is always pleasing. You don't not sitting there going, "Oh my God, what we've done here? This is a this was an error." Uh, so that's always pleasing. Um, so yeah, I think it's been overall overall good. Obviously, other players we targeted, we didn't get. We'll look at them in future. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad the fans are happy. But if they're happy, then I'm happy. Right? Definitely, definitely. And in the summer, naturally, some transfers get more drawn out. We've seen some that the club get a tweet every day, announce Hickey, announce the Hamsgard, and then some kind of come out of the blue. For me, the Ben Me one and, and the Thomas Strakosha one, we didn't kind of see happening. It came out of nowhere. Yeah. First of all, why is that, that some transfers take longer than others? And secondly, when it does drag on, how frustrating is that for you? If it drags on, it's not so frustrating. Um, if it's under control and we know why those delays are happening and all the rest of it, I mean, it's part of the job eventually. It can't get too frustrated by it. It's just navigating the whole, the whole system, really. 
the reason I think some of them get done quicker and, and, and you hear less about it with, with Ben and Thomas in particular is because they will go to our contract. So clearly if we want to sign them, the only people we have to speak to is really the player and their agent. So there are we can go and say, do you want to sign? Yes, here you go, done. And it'll be quite quick. There's no negotiation with the selling club who are trying to you know, look at the best options for them. And obviously along the line, there's fewer people, parties in the chain along the way, which means that there's few people that can basically leave it frankly. So, uh, so that's why I think they come about but more by surprise some of the ones. Um, for you, and there's a lot of people you see, you see that Fabrizio Romano's out there in the moment. When you see those things getting leaked, what, what goes on in your head? What are you thinking? So Fabrizio Romano, I hadn't really heard of him too much before the last sort of six months. And now he seems to be everywhere. A friend, yeah, a friend of mine, is um, his son, his son, uh, his son noted that I'd been mentioned. My name had been referenced by Fritz Romano. He thought that I'd like somehow that would I'd made it like in the terms of celebrity. This was like the if you mentioned by Fritz, I'm like who? You know. So he was he was delighted by that. Um, sorry, what was the question? And how frustrating you do when that happens, and what was the impact? For you? What's going through your head? Because does it alert other clubs then to certain business? Uh, well, it can be. It can be frustrating when it when it leaks and uh, and, and often you know the motivation of why and who might have done it. So. Yeah, trying to bring up you know other interest and, and get a better price, so that can be frustrating. But um, sometimes, if it leaks and it's already you know, something that we've already got well agreed and well down the line with, then it's, it's no big deal. But you expect it to happen at some some point. What you want to do is for it to happen when, it, when you've already got a player in a hotel and a medical, and it's already already done. To paperwork signed, you know. So um, that's the ideal. But the transfer window is its own entertainment now, isn't it? Alongside alongside the actual game, so you just accept it for what it is. Do you find it entertainment? Oh, no, 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 not really. That's my job, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely not. And, and, and looking at the kind of the profile a lot of ways, you mentioned people like Keane and Aaron for the future. And ben, I think, was one that came out of nowhere, like we said. And how, how, how early in the window did that kind of become a, a thought that Ben could be available? Because for me, I, I'll be honest, he kind of seemed a bit off, off the radar. Well, of course, we know exactly who's, who's available and who's not through the window yeah. with Ben. And, um, and obviously, we are constantly evaluating what we need and, and, and the fitness of certain players and, and where we are, you know, with Ethan being injured in longer term, you know, trying to figure out exactly where we go. Um, with Mads Beck, who's gone on loan, there's always a feeling that he would potentially want to go on loan this year because he needs to go and play regularly. So again, we're trying to balance of what point do we bring a player in to enable that to happen or do we just stick with, you know, stick with what we've got. So the good thing about Ben is obviously the, the you know, experience and the, the quality he's got is, is, is it's something we don't normally have an opportunity to get in. Like it's very rare for us to take a player with so much experience. So that was a big, a big plus. And obviously the fact that he was injured and that we couldn't really go straight in and do it. We had to we had assess whether that was, you know, and um, and, and uh, make sure that it was, it was probably fit and that he could go in and train and play without any risk to, to himself and to us. So, um, so I was really pleased to get that one done. It's a good, you know, like it's good to get players in with a bit of experience. Um, but it wasn't on the radar on day one. But see, we monitored it through the through the window. Yeah. And the other thing, as a fan, you get nervous about is when you see, especially with Aaron and Keane, their names getting linked with other clubs as well. Yeah. How do you have to then? What's the process then when you're hearing maybe whispers of other other interest? Do you have to kind of? How do we sell Brentford to these players to make sure that they know this is the right place for them in the next step? Because everyone that I've spoken to, in their first interview, has said I knew that this was the right place for me for my football. Yeah, but the sample of people you're looking at are only the ones who signed for us. So like, all those who didn't sign for us, they would all say, no, it wasn't the right move. So we've got a selective sample there. Um, it's nothing, I think uh, for a lot of players, we don't need to sell it anymore. I think they understand what we're trying to do, especially for players like Keane and, and Aaron um, and, and Michael Townsgaard. You know, they understand completely what the club's about. We're going to play young players. We've got the opportunity to play at a really good level. Um, we've been doing that for years. Some players, obviously, Lots of with us, like Rico, Wyvern, Josh De Silva, some have moved on and they're doing really well for themselves. And obviously internationally now, especially with post Christian Eriksen, I think our brand's you know known very well. So so the selling process isn't isn't too difficult. Um, in terms of um, whispers of other clubs being involved and all the rest of it, well that's just good old fashioned research really of like what's going on, who's involved, who who might be interested, who might step ahead of us and how do we yeah. Try and make sure we, we stay at the front of the queue until the deal can be done. So you've mentioned before about the progression of the club just there, about kind of especially since Christian, we've, we've pushed us to another level and second season in the Premier League as well. How does that affect you when you're doing your shopping and does it affect the pool of players that we can we can now fish for? 
Not massively, not massively, because obviously the, <clears throat> the pool of players, it increases because we've got some more money being the Premier League, right? That's why it increases. Um, with Ericsson being here, I think it obviously increases the brand of the club, and I think people know what it stands for more. And, um, um, and you know, perhaps a year ago, um, maybe someone like Aaron Hickey maybe looked at Brentford and went, well, we'll just come in the Premier League, is there a chance to go down? But obviously, we had a good finish to last season. Um, we showed ourselves to be like a solid, hopefully, solid enough Premier League team as it stands at the minute. And um, so, you know, coming in that we've got. Um, you know, a, a good platform to play from, not 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 necessarily a struggling side, although obviously not necessarily going to be a top four side either. Um, and 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 also economics can dictate where you can shop as well in terms of obviously two or three or three players from Italy, also one was out of contract. But again, um, uh, you know, we've got the financial power to be able to go there and in the Serie A and bring bring players over now, which maybe we didn't have in the past, and maybe it was more the other way around, obviously a long time ago. So so they're, they're more the you know the the dynamics that I think impact this. Yeah. Um, and we spoke a lot about incoming, but obviously we know you said goodbye to a few players. We've got Marcus Force and obviously Halil going out on loan, Mads Beck as well. What what was kind of the process with some of those loans and obviously Marcus going out permanently? And Marcus was the initial thought with Marcus with Marcus was to also put him on loan. Um you know the loan at Hull last year probably wasn't the best loan for him really. Um or us and probably Hull so it wasn't it wasn't perfect. So, uh, so the initial thought was to, to, to find him a good place to come and play minutes. Um, and Middles would get on the table and it became obvious that they'd like to do it more long term permanently. And we looked at it, so have a long time in his contract with us. Um, do we want to go through that process? And then he does that, doesn't have another good loan. Again, we're, we're back to square one with that again. So there's always a balance there. And if you know, the finances are right, then you know, we're open to doing a deal. So, so that was the one on payment. I think we, we sold anyone else. Don't we, oh. Uh, Don Thompson, Tom, we saw that Tom, obviously yeah. uh, nearly a year to go, and obviously I think you know having Phoenix switch need to go on start somewhere afresh. The rest are all on, on loan, and some Mads and Heather Hill, Heather Hill just going today. Um, you know we'll, we'll see how they get on, but I'm pretty happy with with Mads Bidstrup and Dan Oigo and Paris and Nathan. I think they're all you know they've all started off pretty well. So 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 far Touchwood has been been good um, process of getting the loans out so far. Yeah. And spoke about a couple of the B team members there. B team have obviously had a big summer of recruitment, a few players leaving the club and a lot of players coming in. Um, I guess the big one that stands out initially is, is Yegor arriving from uh, the Pro 2. So that was an interesting signing for a lot of reasons. What can you tell us about, about that deal? Uh, well, it was interesting because he's a, he's a big young talent in Ukraine. Obviously, um, what's happening over there is obviously you know, tragic, but um means that players are trying to find pathways, uh, especially some of the non-Ukrainian players. Um, and so when the opportunity came up, it was like kind of a, um, an obvious thing. And again, using Brentford's brand of developing your players to sort of try and sell that opportunity to him. This time through the B team, because he's a little bit younger, so to come in in the B team with a view to progressing in the first team. Um, and obviously, again, because of the finances being the company, we've got more money to invest in the B team. So he's, he's our record signing comfortably. And then we bought Michael Olympic Bay as well. He was coming in, we had to. Um, He's injured the minutes. But obviously, we've got big hopes for him. So there's been good investment in that team. Some of the other um, young lads coming in as well. Sometimes you don't realise often when you bring some of the other lads in who haven't necessarily cost a lot of money. There's there's two or three in that group who you can't quite pick out at this stage, but then they they progress and, and come through. So Finn Stevens being a good example of that. Um, Ryan Trevor being a good example of that. So so when you take a big in, there's always a lot. Of, Turnover in the B team. When there's a big influx, you have high hopes for one or two you pay money for, but then you'll get surprises along the way, and that's one of the, one of the great things about it. And I guess now with the, with the new Andre teams as well, does it mean we can get players that are slightly younger that can play up to the B team as well as playing at that level? Yeah, exactly. So before this summer, we can only take players at 17 on professional contracts. Now we can sign scholars at 16. So it gives us a, a little bit of a different market. We've tried to do that with the two uh, young Sheffield Wednesday boys and um, a couple of others more recently as well. Um, Marley, for example, the goalkeeper. Um, so we've 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 got the opportunity to bring those young players in, and they'll just take a long time to develop. They'll be part of the B team, but as the academy progresses and we go from Cat Four to Cat Three, obviously we'll have all the age groups go at that point. Yeah, look, I've taken a lot of your time. You're going into a lot of detail as well. I'll let you get to go and meet uh, Lee in the park. I'm, I'm still working. I'm not going to be meeting. <laughs> obviously, I'll, I'll not be in case anything happens. You know. Of course, of course. Also, another thing to this is people think, right? That's you feet up for a bit, but this is only a, a, a small part of your role, isn't it? Uh, 
it will be queued up, queued up for a bit, trust me on that. But um, it is only, I mean, I think it's the most public bit and everyone thinks, well, that's the bit that you do. Yeah. But actually, most of you, it's not. This is the, this is intensely focused on this in the summer, but yeah, the rest of the time, it's a lot of other things to do. So, so crack on. I oh, appreciate your time. Thanks, sir. Okay. Thank One more card to go. If Shandon gets this right, go away, fam. Aaron Hickey. Aaron Hickey. Harry Keane. <laughs> <laughs> the Premier League is 30 years of age, and to celebrate, we thought we'd have a Premier League quiz. Two teams, three rounds.